like to transition to another molecule that I grew up using. Uh, you know, I, I, I seem to have shown up in the field at the right time. So That's assuming are, you're grown up. Right? Uh, that, that, that is actually a very bad assumption. Uh, so there was a wonderful molecule called IMC3G3, which was an M-clone compound that was wonderfully developed initially by Gary Schwartz and Lilly in a phase one, two clinical trial, which was the first investigator meeting I ever got to go to. And it now has a name. This name of this compound is Olar, Olar, Olara. Olara Tumab, uh, which is a bit of a tongue twister. And so... Robin, since you've actually used a lot of this also, what is this? So this is a monoclonal antibody to uh, PDGFR alpha, or platelet-derived growth factor receptor alpha. Um, again, this is given intravenously on day one and eight of a three-week cycle. Um, Dr. Sh Gary Schwartz uh, has done um, a fair bit of preclinical work um, assessing the use of this uh, compound in uh, sarcoma. And there's some very interesting data suggesting um, uh, a good effect in combination with uh, doxorubicin in uh, sarcoma mod models. And this basically led to the phase one, two trial in uh, advanced and metastatic soft tissue sarcoma. So, you know, Jonathan, this is a very interesting phase one, two trial that had a, a kind of a spectacular overall survival. And which was seen, you know, not in a phase three trial, but in a phase two. Uh, but it made a lot of people stand up and notice. And so what do you think the significance of that is? Cautious optimism. <laughs> um, but seriously, the, the, you know, the trial did show a substantially superior overall survival compared to the, compar the control arm. Um, but not, you know... It, you know, I think that what really should be expected of this drug is additional investigation, such as a phase three trial, showing that uh, olorotumab plus doxorubicin is superior to doxorubicin alone uh, in terms of overall survival in this study. Uh, you know, really needs to be looked at in a phase three study, in, in my opinion. Uh, and then the question will also arise, is single agent doxorubicin the appropriate comparator arm? That will also have to be revisited. Uh, however, I am optimistic that uh, this promising activity in, in terms of the combination will hopefully one day give us uh, you know, additional therapeutic options. So John, for this study, I actually think this is the right comparison because it's not uh, quote, replacement, if you will, of right. a type of drug like ifosamid. And I think it would be, if this is positive, or even if it's negative, I think it would be a great comparison to look at doxorubicin and ifosamid with or without Alara to Mab, yeah, for example. The, the only criticism is that, that then if you prove that this combination is superior to doxorubicin, then, then you're saying that this is the new regimen for those patients whom you think single agent doxorubicin is appropriate. So that may be, that, that's certainly a good indication, but that may be limiting the population that you could help mm -hmm. with an yep. additional th therapy. So showing that this regimen is, a, is superior to doxorubicin iphosphamide or a doublet would then allow you to help more people with a more, more active regimen. I think what's striking, though, about the phase two study, and it's uh, making a scratch your head, is a dramatic improvement in overall survival but no improvement in progression-free survival. And that's in contrast to the Pallet study and the Trebectidin study, which both showed PFS but no overall survival. And I think I agree, John, the op, uh, um, I was going to say optimistic caution, but the cautious optimism is, is really important. I think it's dramatic, but it's a small study. It's 60 patients in each arm, 60-some patients in each arm, not designed to look at overall survival as a primary endpoint. I think we just need the phase three study to really define this because the potential is there that the arms were imbalanced in some way that we can't detect. For and, and, and back to your point about continuing therapy, such as with trabectodin, such as we do with tyrosine kinase inhibitors and GIST, patients on, that were randomized and treated with oloratumib plus doxorubicin were able to stop doxorubicin and continue the anti-PDGF receptor inhibitor therapy, uh, which may play a role in extending overall survival. You know, and the other thing that's really interesting is if you get into PDGF biology, this may be the first drug we're using that alters the mesenchymal microenvironment 
which alters mesenchymal tumor biology in a way where we're not really truly understanding what we're doing, but we may be actually growing something out that's different than what we started. And that mm -hmm. may account for this discrepancy yeah. in terms of the uh, progression-free survival and overall survival um, results of the, of the trial. I, I, could. I take your point regarding um, the, the number of patients in the study and you know the heterogeneity basically of, of, of sarcomas, but the trial was powered for um, overall survival. Um, so I, I guess my point is that there are other characteristics that could play a role in, a, in when there's 60 patients in each arm, which could be, for example, one group had bulkier disease than another, and so they had um, uh, fewer, um, uh, shorter survival after progression than point in other taken, yeah, And so that's where we need a larger study yeah, to look at. Agreed. That. So, you know, kind of looking in the tea leaves, I'm beginning to see a CHOP regimen kind of come together mm -hmm. where we have an adria phosphamide with a monoclonal antibody eventually evolving. And, and, you know, Dr. Patel, do you think there are any conclusions that can be drawn at this point about these two novel agents in terms of safety, efficacy, patient selection, or do you think it's too early? Well, I, I think the conclusions that can be drawn are what we've already talked about, that they're clearly drugs of interest and absolutely deserve further development. Uh, I think we have a short list of drugs. We're clearly looking for additional therapeutic modalities to help our patients. Uh, and there's clearly promise. Mm -hmm. Will it be delivered as promised and will it hold up over a period of time? I think are questions that only time will answer. But clearly, uh, I think evophosphamide and oloratumab. And I think one of the critical things here is up until now, we've always tested drugs with some maybe possibly additive effects at the expense of toxicities. Here is one where there may well be some synergy. Mm. And, and you know that's exactly what will get us some logarithmic benefit and get to the next level. So both drugs are clearly exciting. I think if they fulfill the promise and get approved and hold up, I think the landscape of therapy for sarcoma patients will clearly change.